Finally, your patience leads to victory this month. The victory is the truth. It's finally surfacing something you've been wondering about. And it's time to walk away now. This includes any attachments that create misery. Scorpio, the spiritual advice card that I've pulled for you for this month of January 2022 is the Jack of Clubs. So much is going to be happening this month. So much that you're going to be finding out things you had not known before. Some details you've been wondering about in particular to a specific relationship dynamic in your life where you didn't know what was happening. And so you're finally reaching this place where you're going to be told what's going on. I think that it's coming out of nowhere. I think that you are going to be maybe be in this place where you're going to start to realize that you can move on from the situation now, that the stuff that has been creating misery around it, you can now detach. That detachment is going to come at the end of January of 2022. Until then, I think that this Jack of Clubs is asking you to stay open to perspectives you had not considered before. There's more to the story. We're going to unpack all of that in the tarot reading. Welcome to Uprise Astrology podcast and today's episode. Today, we are going to be focusing on two very important transits, in my opinion, that are going to really shape the month of January, 2022. The first thing we're going to look at in today's episode is the powerful full moon in cancer that it is going to be unfolding at 27 degrees. And then we will also take a look at the Venus retrograde that is coming to an end on January 29th. It is stationing at 11 degrees to start to go direct. And what does all of that mean? We're going to take a look at the chart. I'm also pulling a tarot reading at the very end to see what this month is going to bring to you. My intention is to cut through the noise and bring you the most important messages so that you are prepared. Let's dive into this reading and pull up the charts. All right, Scorpio. So let's take a look at this beautiful chart. <laughs> that is showing us where the full moon is unfolding for you guys. So the full moon is going to be happening between your third house and the ninth house. Now, before we get into the houses, I want to just recap real quick on this full moon. Why is this full moon so powerful? When is it happening? It jump starts the week of January 17th, Monday. So we get into the week with a lot of passion, a lot of emotion. This is a very over emotional moon, over emotional in wherever it's happening for you in the chart, right? Um, but the emotions are around caution and also protection, but also a sense of getting yourself to a place or feeling like you're getting yourself into a place where you're just ready. You're ready for your life to move in a particular way. You're ready for your, for your life to uh, you know, unfold in a particular way. There is a part of us that feels very like we're ready to get into this week to get things done. That is sort of the sense that I'm getting from this full moon. It is in the sign of cancer. The moon is comfortable here. It is going to be at 27 degrees. The two is our emotion. The seven is our intuition. When we put these two together, it brings us into clarity. Uh, and that provides a headstrong type of feeling because when we add the two and the seven up, it comes to a nine. We're ready. We're ready to move forward. We're ready to take some action. So based on our intuitive sense and feeling, this is the kind of moon that I predict we are going to be experiencing. So it's very powerful. Now it is unfolding between your third and the ninth house. Let's take a look at what is happening in your third house. The third house is the house of intellectual, anything intellectual, anything that is in the intellectual realm. So what does that mean? Well, this is our mindset, how we think. This also has to do with conversations that are meaningful or impactful or any kind of exchange of ideas that is happening between you and other people. Now, who are these other people? Generally speaking, in the third house, this can be acquaintances, this can be coworkers, this can be anybody who is within your immediate environment, because the third house narrows everything down to the immediate environment. 
This can also have to do with siblings. I'm sure you've heard this before. If you're not new to astrology, the third house can relate to, you know, brothers and sisters and siblings and people who are cousins who, who are kind of um, connected to us through the family. So the third house can be that. The ninth house is themes where you're involved in the higher mind, but essentially the ninth house is about freedom. It is about how you want to free yourself from the perspective of the higher mind. And it requires for us to expand our consciousness. So the moon is going to be looking at the sun in the third house and saying, okay, well, what are some of the things that we need to take action on now? What are some of the epiphanies that, that you're having? But what's the truth about what it is that we're learning? Because what's happening after this also is that a day after the full moon is unfolding, the sun is going to be trining the North Node in Taurus. Now, why is this big? Anytime there is any transit to the North Node, it is it can really expand the subject. It can bring the subject more out into the open for us to take a look at the theme or take a look at the subject or the circumstance. Now, it's not only big because of that, but it's also big because the nodes are now switching from your eighth house into the seventh house. The nodes remain in a sign for 18 months. And so they switch signs every 18 months. So that is a big deal. The North and the South node are a recentering. A, a theme that we're working out where we're recentering over and over again, where we're regrounding ourselves in these subjects or somehow there is some kind of a theme that we have to work through depending on what house it goes through or the degrees that it goes through. So let's recap real quick. What does that mean? The second house, okay, has to do with finances and resources and self-worth and how you handle this area of your life. The eighth house is all about your commitments, your commitments to anything, to people, to money, to intimacy. Where do those commitments lie? What do they look like? There have been changes that have been occurring between the eighth and the second house. The North Node in Gemini for the past 18 months have had you take a look at what intimacy is, what maybe sex life looks like, what maybe your idea about commitment needs to look like. There's been a lot of psychology also here that has been reviewed by you because the North Node has been bringing these areas back into your life to review. Some of these degrees were in a tougher position, but you are better because of it now to review this aspect of your life and go, okay, well, I think differently now about things that used to be true for so long, they may not be true anymore because you have been able to see and view two sides of it. And perhaps you have been even doing some kind of deep research in the background in regards to your own desires in the area of commitment, okay? Now, the South Node in Sagittarius has realigned what does your worth look like? What's the truth about your worth? What are you worth? What is it worth it? right? Is something worth it? Is your approach on how you're manifesting money, is that worth it? Is it worth it to hold on to particular positions, right? You have been redefining self-worth in the second house. So this has been a big transit for 18 months. And now the North Node and the South Node is switching. And this is huge. Let's talk about the North Node in Taurus in the seventh house. The North Node in Taurus in the seventh house this is fixed earth. This is you looking at a completely different um, theme now in your life that has a lot to do with your bonds to people and the definition of bonds. So you are now going to be going through this area of your chart where you are going to redefine bonds based on the experiences that are being you know, provided this year by the planets. And what is going to happen here, I think for a lot of you, the prediction that I'm having for a lot of you is that you're beginning to see that, you know, what you defined as the most ideal relationship is now going to look different 
based on sudden changes that will occur, okay? Or a surprising element that will start to unfold. And based because of that, you are now investigating more of relationships or you're investigating different types of relationships, or even if you are in a committed relationship, you are going to be in this place where you are, I say investigating, but really it is about, you know, you diving a little bit deeper into what is the truth about relationships for you in regards to what makes you bond to another person, right? How are you relating to that person? So there is this up-leveling that is going to occur. When I say up-leveling, you're going to up-level from wherever you're at right now, okay? You're going to make something better. It is Taurus. Taurus is responsible for methodically moving us through um, a pattern or a way to do something better so it's more sustainable for the long term. So you're working on this aspect. So there's going to be a lot of new beginnings in this area of your chart. So it can be in business partnerships, it can be in romantic partnerships, but whatever you define as a bond and how you relate to somebody else or the most important people in your life, this is going to um, go through a little bit of a, a review and then as a result, you're going to be given opportunities to make changes in this area. Now, the south node is going to be in your first house. The first house is anything to do with social behavior, anything to do with how you portray yourself to other people, what do you show other people about yourself. And so the south node in Scorpio is redefining boundaries in this area. You're going to have to work out the boundaries, like who are you when it comes to the journey that you live? And then what do you, what do you portray of yourself to other people and what do they see? What do they get to see? And perhaps there is sort of an outdated um, image or an outdated part about yourself that you no longer want to hold this image or you want to make it even more secure, right? So there's a part of you that is going to work out the themes of being adamant about what is true about your journey here and what's true about what you want to hold on to when it comes to how you interact with um, with the outside world and who you are as a result of it and what you show or don't show. So the first house is going to be a time in Scorpio where boundaries is huge. It's a key word here with the South Node in Scorpio. It's a realigning of boundaries. It is also a realigning of truly making some changes that are so necessary at this time about power, right? Because Scorpio is, is about power, uh, so is Taurus. And it is about the, the value that we have that is empowering or disempowering, right? And so the power over yourself, right? Um, what the boundaries are, what that subject looks like. This is the uh, South and North node switches. So over the next 18 months, you're going to be focusing on this. Now, what is happening the uh, day after the full moon? So let's recap on this real quick, right? So you have the sun in Capricorn that is now taking the energy of the full moon and now taking a look at the North node in Taurus, and it's going to form this shrine. And this shrine has to do with vision. That's what I'm seeing. That's what I'm predicting. And for you guys, this will have to do with, okay, what does a new emotional uh, space looks like when it comes to the value of your relationships and ideas or the way in which you communicate with your relationships. So the, the key words here with this is going to be a new approach on how you speak or exchange ideas within the closest relationships that you have. So there is a new vision or a new future that is unfolding now based on you feeling emotionally that you're ready to do things very different because you have a different point of view of your life. It comes through a little bit unexpected. The reason why it comes through unexpected is because Uranus is going to be in Taurus stationing to go direct the same time, okay, the same day. So there is sort of a power that comes back online when it comes to where you may have felt a little bit lost 
you may have felt felt a little bit lost within a particular uh, idea or person, or I'm going to say between a story that you felt like maybe wasn't yours, but there's a part of you that is now coming back online with understanding what you need to break away from emotionally. You know, what in your life has created sort of this attachment? And some of you, this goes back into many other patterns you've lived out with the same exact theme of attachment. You are detaching now. So a part of you is going to go, okay, for me to explore a new emotional comfort zone within my relationships, I'm going to have to do things different now. And so it begins, right? This is just a beginning, sort of like a vision. There's ideas that come through with this as well. And that's what I'm predicting. Now, the other thing that is huge about a week later, well, about 10 days later on January 29th, Venus is finally going to station to go direct in Capricorn at 11 degrees. Venus has been in Capricorn since November 5th. It's stationed retrograde on the 19th of December at 26th. And so then, since then, we have thought, okay, so maybe our life was going to go in a particular direction, but it's not anymore. We're now reviewing relationship dynamics, right? So you see that there are very important relationship dynamics that you are reviewing at this time as well. And that has to do with what you desire for your life to look like when it comes to goals that you have, or when it comes to the value of your environment, like who do you want to work with? Who do you want to see? Who do you want to converse with? What are some of the goals in the area of the third house? The third house also has to do with like your mindset. Like you might be drawn to very specific, either things in the day-to-day that are kind of restorative in a sense, they bring you back to a sense of being whole. But maybe at first it felt like, it could have felt like that there was a little bit of a void. Like you felt like maybe you weren't able to understand the energies at the time when they were unfolding. And this was maybe a little bit of a heavy energy during, you know, December. Um, That is when, you know, Venus was together with Pluto even more so in the degrees. And it was just... It was a it was a heavy energy, you know. I don't know about you guys, but I know for me it was a heavy energy. But I'm predicting here in the third house that you may have like realized that there's a lot going on in your environment, and you may have picked up some of those energies. Some of you may have been involved in conversations or people conversing with you, and as a result of it, you are realizing that you must do things different now for yourself, or there's a desire to reach for a different kind of mindset or a different way in which you view, you know, yourself, your life and your mindset as a result of it. Okay. So when Venus stations direct on the 29th, what I'm predicting for a lot of you is that you are going to be in this place where you become now very aware and very clear about the big picture of your life and the value of your ideas and the value of who you are and the value of what you bring to the plate. And as a result of it, you are, what I'm predicting for a lot of you is is that you're actually gonna start to realize that anything that you have gone through, particularly in the last two months, um, has helped you to become better towards yourself. You have been reviewing what, you could be even talking to yourself in a particular way, right? Have you been talking to yourself in a particular way? Have you been you know, what about that didn't work? Or what about the uh, relationship dynamics in your life that are reminding you of how you talk to yourself, how it impacts your mind. And then as a result, you can't quite maintain clarity in regards to this. So you have reviewed this, that's what I'm predicting. And then you're going to have this sense of wisdom that you're walking with or walking away with, right? Like you, you are in this place where you now realize that but this is the bigger picture of my life. I am no longer, I will never backtrack like this ever again. And this is a new vision. This is a new direction. And there's a sense of wholeness that comes back to your mindset and the next set of things that you want to focus on. Okay. And this will include also some really important relationships in your life as well. So that's what I'm predicting here for um, the month of January, 2022. Let's move on to your tarot reading. 
All right, Scorpio, so here are your cards for January 2022. So let's go through each of the cards. Five of Swords. What can you expect this month? Well, there's a lot that is going to be happening around you. There's a lot of details to work out. That is the feeling in the sense that I'm getting from the Five of Swords. I think a part of you maybe is a little bit worried about whether you're going to, um, you know, be able to kind of maintain sort of a particular uh, energy. And this has a lot to do with you maybe thinking about what is it that is making you remember the past? Something about are you remembering the past? Is the past some kind of past situation that you're fearful about whether it is going to happen again or not? There's a part of you that's a little bit like, I don't want to look at that. I also want to move forward. So there are some things that you're working out there all throughout the month that has a lot to do with freeing your mind space, okay? That's what I feel like a lot of you are going to be working on. But what ends up happening is, is that there's just a lot of moving pieces. Some of you are either doing some new thing at work or you are uh, organizing uh, something at work that requires your attention or administrative stuff. And so this, this comes into play because... There are other people involved that are asking you a lot of questions that you may not necessarily either want to answer or you are just in a space of not maybe knowing exactly the answers at this time because you didn't expect to be maybe in this in this situation. Now, there is sort of up until the 18th, there is this part of your um, of your mindset that is impacted by a heartbreak or a situation that seemed that um, had come to an end or has to come to an end now. And it has to do also with finances or something that you invested your time into. And so now what you're learning is, is that you, this part of your life is over. It's, it's part of a lifestyle that you just don't want to be a part of it anymore or you disconnected yourself. But there's a very particular past romantic relationship or re relationship that you used to get something particular out of it. And what you're realizing, I think now is, is that it helped you sort of, you know, get through the time that you were in. And so now it is time to walk away because you are completely different. You're also just in a place where you're a lot more um, free from certain uh, attachments. This has to do with attachments. You know, we, we talked about this in the very beginning. Now, the Eight of Cups is really interesting to me because you are ready to make some choices now that will completely detach yourself from anything else or anybody else that gets in the way of you moving on and just being done with this chapter of your life that has a lot to do with you just being in a place where you had to maybe give yourself some some of this experience, right? Like you had to experience it for whatever the experience was worth. So the Eight of Cups here basically says that you're going to be ready to detach now. That's what I'm getting very strongly. What ends up happening also is any kind of business dealing, any kind of negotiation or anything that you're launching this month or any kind of business-like dealings, it's going to be super successful. You're aiming for that, but it becomes also super successful. And then the Eight of Swords here is really interesting because as you start to move through these different spaces that are busy, that feel like there's a lot of hours in the day or feel like, feels like there's a lot of organizational pieces, you're also really reflecting upon and actually really enjoying that you are in this place that you're in that has a lot to do with change. But it's the change that is freeing you. You know, that's what this is about. It's like you're looking back to the areas of your life that used to make you feel like crap. Like literally, like this did not feel good. You did not want to be in this place. But what I think you're coming to the conclusion of is that you have built a much better, stronger uh, relationship to yourself as a result of it. Again, 
it ties into a very specific relationship, all of the stuff that I'm talking about right now. The King of Cups is really interesting to me because it's in the challenge position. Uh, it's in the growth challenge position. Now, that is interesting to me because there are still some things I think that this month are going to come up that are boundary issues. These boundary issues have to do with people that are nagging, with people who are trying to point out things about you in a very passive aggressive way let's just leave it at that probably something that you're going to circle back around to but right now you may not have the time just take sort of an, a, a mental note the king of cups to me has a lot to do with emotional boundaries that we are setting and we're coming to the end stage like we've graduated this aspect but it's in the it's in the challenge position so there is somebody here who is trying to who's trying to like take a risk in a, in a way by saying stuff, but it's very passive aggressive and it just doesn't land well, um, especially not with you, but they're like not aware of it at all. They don't even know you that way. Like they don't, it's really interesting because they're not aware at all on how you operate or how you function. And so this is going to be kind of fun <laughs> in, in a way because uh, they are going to get shut down, right? So I feel that this is something you're, you're going to become aware of more towards the end of the, the month. Um, and then so this is interesting, right? Because what is also happening at the same time as you're dealing with this situation, you are starting to understand maybe where in your life, because we see the Six of Wands and the Six of Pentacles, where in your life you are um, better off putting your time and energy into. I almost feel like there's two things that you're doing right now or maybe two areas that you're really focusing on when it comes to also making money. And you're starting to realize that you are finding the solution to what is more worth it now. It's almost like you, you needed to wait. You needed to wait four of ones to see what where you stand and that is going to become clear as well at the end of this month. And that's what I'm seeing here for uh, the reading for January 2022. It's it's going to be a month where there's just a lot of moving pieces and a lot of sort of uh, recognizing where you are at right now and where things are leading. It's almost like you're a little bit in this transition place and also in this place of um, understanding where things are leading next. Um, and I think it's brilliant because more is to come. That's a wrap on today's episode. I hope that you liked this video. I hope that it provided you the guidance that you need in order to navigate through this month. Thank you so much for being here. I would love to stay connected to you. So be sure to subscribe. You can also follow me on Instagram or TikTok at Uprise Astrology Podcast. And I will see you here in the next episode.